Hello, uh, I'm Nellie Wong and uh, I'm from San Francisco, California and uh, I'm here today to share my thoughts with you about what's going on with the uh, coronavirus pandemic and the racism that has been occurring uh, since the pandemic has taken hold of this country and many other countries. I'm a, a, a poet, I'm a longtime writer and a socialist feminist activist and I'm currently retired, but still some of these things are very, very important for us to talk about. Uh, most recently, uh, you've probably heard of about some of the um, anti Chinese anti-Asian racism and discrimination that's been going on and um, I'll start right off with some of the comments that people have heard uh, that's been stated on the internet or has been happening on the streets because of the pandemic. A woman was yelled at and, uh, in San Diego and she heard people say, go back to China or I'll shoot myself. Another woman said that she was yelled at too. They just see that you're Asian and you are horrible. A university professor heard this from someone on her campus. Whoever did this to us should be hung or shot. And another incident was two Burmese American kids were slashed because they were seen as Asian Americans who are to blame for the coronavirus pandemic. So all this is pretty ugly stuff. And sometimes it seems like it's old because as a longtime Chinese American woman, uh, activist and, 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 and uh, resident of uh, the Bay Area in California. It seems that I've heard it all and seen it all. But this anti-racism, anti-Chinese and anti-Asian racism really is a new. If we can go all the way back to the gold rush, and when immigrants from China and other countries came to America to not only look for gold, but to find opportunities to work and support their families. And then we also have to realize that the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882 was the official sanctioning of racism against a specific ethnic racial group. This, the Chinese laborers in particular, because the uh, merchants and others were allowed in, but the cry of the Chinese stealing jobs away from the real Americans, white Americans, was loud and clear. We also have to think about how the model minority myth of Asians, Asian Pacific Islander Americans have been used as a wedge against blacks and other racial groups. So as a wedge then, the model minority myth says, hey, you know, if the Chinese or the Asians can do it, why can't you? But it really belies our history in this country where the capitalist system 
has always pitted one community of color against another. I grew up in the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s actually, and when I went to San Francisco State University, I was really shocked in a way that I did not know my own history or the history of people of color because I went to work, you know, and um, that's all I understood is that you get a job and you get married and you have kids and kind of living out the so-called American dream and, you know, buy a house in the suburbs and and you're, you're going to be fine as long as you do that. But my own education really made a difference in looking at the United States and looking at what kind of a system we have here that is supposed to be the land of opportunity and that everyone is equal, which is not true. So what I wanted to do is share with you today um, some of my thoughts and ideas in poetry, actually, um, that in fighting racism and being in the midst of it, being that, um, you know, Asians are the, the good Asians, the bad Asians, and especially during World War II, when uh, the Chinese Americans were soon as seen as the good Asians and the bad Asians were the Japanese, because the Japanese and Japanese Americans who were then uh, sent by executive order by President, then President Roosevelt, that um, because of Pearl Harbor and what happened there, then the Japanese and Japanese Americans were rounded into camps. They call them in German camps. They're actually, you know, they were detained and um, and sent away and losing their constitutional rights and such. So. It's a long history, but then again, it's, not, it's what in the most recent years that I feel like sometimes, what, you know, I, 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 I just, you know, I could be an old fogey. I am an old fogey when you think about it, and it's like I've seen and heard it all. So the current racist incidents happening to uh, Asian Americans, uh, and not necessarily Chinese, but but that's where it's centered because even our president, of course, has called it the Chinese virus, the Wuhan virus has been uh, referred to. And then suddenly, you know, we're kind of in the, uh, what, what I would call, what the limelight, but it's not the kind of limelight anywhere we would really be seeking, except that it's happening. And as I indicated with, um, some of the comments that are being screamed at and some of the, the violence that is against people of Asian ancestry, Asian identity. As a long time working woman, uh, I experienced the kind of racism as a Chinese American, as someone with brown skin, uh, that somehow we are perpetually born. This is called, Where is My Country? Where is my country? Where does it lie? The 4th of July approaches and I'm asked for firecrackers. Is it because of my skin color? Surely not because of my husband's name. In these skyways, I dart in and out when the store sells rich ice cream and I choose bittersweet nuggets. In the office, someone asked me to interpret Korean, my own Cantonese, netted and steal my own saliva. Where is my country? Where does it lie? Tucked between boundaries, striated between dark dance floors and whispering lanterns, smoking of indistinct 
indistinguishable features. Salta and Mexico, where a policeman speaks to me in Spanish in the voice of a Chinese grocer who asks if I am Filipino. Channeled in the white businessman who discovers that I do not sound Chinese. Garbled in, white, in a white woman who tells me I speak perfect English. Webbed in another who tells me I speak with an accent. Where is my country? Where does it lie? Now the dress designers flood us with the Chinese look. Quilting our bodies in satin. Stitching our eyes with silk. Where is my country? Where does it lie? So Asian Americans, Asian Pacific Americans have been seen as other and perpetually foreign for a long, long time. We're loved because we're not black. And we're hated because we don't belong here. We're hated because we're perpetually foreign. And then the first arrival of the Chinese to the United States were seen as diseased, were cunning, were sharp. And Asian American women, Asian women were seen as whores and dispensable. And we have to look at our history of how not only we were treated, but how we are used. But then we have been fighting back for a long time. I also want to share with you then this poem that I've written that is a response to the recent cases of racism and racial hatred. Ooh, you know, we're somehow not civilized because we might eat different foods. We eat chicken feet and we are not dead. We eat chicken feet and we are not dead. Our bowls are rimmed with bats and fireflies. Our feet pedal sewing machines making blue jeans and gowns. We march in Chinatown protesting discrimination. Coronavirus has no yellow skin or brown eyes. We are delivery workers, doctors, dancers, actors. Our ancestors memorized the number of doors and windows in the home village, whether our fathers had more than one wife. Our foremothers sold their bodies to feed the children. Ah Bing cultivated wild and sweet cherries in Oregon. We make masks and we don't hide. We fight for Asian American studies, Chinglish, and unbridled song. Agitating for inclusion is a political act. We strike for higher wages, rest periods for our aching backs. We are immigrants working at home all over the world. We are natives born in Eureka, Augusta, Oakland, Phoenix, Flushing. We dispense herbs, make soup to heal our bodies, harvest chrysanthemums, grapes, pea shoots, winter melon. Oh yeah, we yakety yak, we jitterbug and jive, play flute and drums. We dream and we braise and we steam and we write. We eat chicken feet and we are not dead. And there's so much for us to still do to change America for the better. And I think that organizing to fight against racism and sexism, homophobia, and particularly the notion that somehow we are foreigners and that we don't belong here. I see that we're here to really fight for building a better country. And that's why I'm active with 
the Freedom Socialist Party. I am participating in the Labor Fest Writers Group to continue writing and fighting back. And that our long history as workers to help build this country has made America what it is. But that the way that we're going to make change is really fighting for a socialist feminist society. And so I would like to ask you to please, we need the education about the true histories of people of color and other minorities here so that we can win the battles and make life healthier and better for us all. Please check socialism.com and thanks for listening.